everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Lindsay and I love all things reading because reading is what? It is fundamental as per RuPaul. Um, I am gonna be bringing you kind of a vlog style video as of right now. I don't really know what my plan is, but I know that I need to get motivated to get some reading done this weekend. Um, I am starting to film on Friday, May the 13th, so I'm hoping that this will be out the following week. Um, as I said in my last video, I am doing a buddy read right now, so I am reading The Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. I am, just get my spot here, I am right here, so I am on page 100, and I got this little magnetic, um, bookmark which is doing good things because my other bookmarks are in another book that I'm hoping to pick up this weekend after I finish this one. So, so far I am really enjoying this book. I'm not going to be putting any spoilers in here because I know that Heather over at the Disney Housewife and Robin over at Oh Hello Robin are also reading this along with me. So uh, I don't want to do any spoilers just in case they haven't finished or if we're at different points and things. But what I will say is I am really loving that Simone St. James is building this little community and the descriptions of the houses and the places are phenomenal. When we're at Beth Greer's house and there, I, this isn't a spoiler, but uh, when we're at her house and all of a sudden there's little like creak or click and I'm just like I can feel those things as she's writing them. So it's a very atmospheric book so far. Um, I'm really liking the storyline. I'm actually really enjoying all of the characters as well. Nobody is unlikable as of right now. Um, this is kind of already said in the synopsis of the book but Beth's father along with two other males were previously murdered back in the 70s I believe and she is still living in the house like her family home and it's dual timeline so sometimes we're getting 1977 and sometimes we're getting like 90s area and uh, so there is another woman named Shay who has a daytime job but at nighttime she works on a true crime blog so she was working at her doctor's office job and she saw somebody familiar in the waiting room and that ended up being Beth Greer. So she's now set up an interview with Beth and that's kind of what I'm getting into right now. I think the setup and everything about how they got to this point was done really, really well. I love, like I said, all of the descriptions and everything. So I'm really excited to keep reading this one. Like I said, this one is, a, I'm 100 pages in, it's actually 341 pages, so I think I should be either able to finish up later today or tomorrow. I don't have anything else planned for right now other than potentially watching the Blue Jays uh, hopefully win against the Tampa Bay uh, Rays. But there is another book that is also on my list right now, and it is the new Emily Henry book called Book Lovers. I think that this is probably going to be what gets me out of a semi reading slump. Um, I am getting a bit faster with my reading, but I think this is the book that's actually going to take me out. Not that this book isn't great. Both of them are. This one is definitely keeping my intrigue kind of alive, uh, but this one is just a fluffy feel good romance novel and I'm super excited to get to that one. I was actually going to pick this one up over last weekend, but it was Mother's Day weekend so I didn't have a chance to. Uh, so this is the one that I picked up this week. I am going to finish this. I have high hopes because I'm filming it. It's going to keep me accountable and uh, yeah, I'll probably check in around page 200 to let you know my thoughts. All right, you guys, I am about halfway through almost. I'm on page 160. And the reason I'm checking in now is because I just come across a part two. So I thought I would stop there, give you some thoughts on the last 60 pages. I am extremely intrigued. Um, 
the Greer Mansion especially is something that has me extremely confused and um, the hair on the back of my neck kind of like stood up a little bit during this last little little scene and I still really enjoy the characters. I think that there is some intrigue with Shay. They're hinting at something that happened in her past and they haven't really revealed anything as of yet. So that's interesting. Uh, the relationship between her and her sister, uh, she thought that they were quite close. There was a piece of information that she just got that she thought her sister would have been more willing to share. So I'm interested to see kind of where that relationship goes. And just with Beth in general, what a character. She just, she comes off as this very strong, powerful woman, but I think she is deeply disturbed and if not scared, maybe just really so socially inept and just she's stuck in the past. So I am really enjoying this book. Donna, Rochelle, you've got great taste. Um, so yeah, I'm on page 160. We're going back to December of 1977. Uh, I think we were just kind of around September. So it's about three months after um, some killings went on and some questioning had happened at the police station. So we're gonna go back to Beth's point of view here for chapter 23. This is a pretty quick read. I've only been reading for a couple of hours. I am a slow reader, so it does take me a little bit longer to get through the chapters. Um, but yeah, I'm about halfway through and I am really excited. I don't know if I'll give you another update before I finish the book because I don't want to be spoiling anyone. Um, I hope I haven't done that. I don't think that I have as of yet, but uh, yeah, really great writing. I am very excited to see how the story ends. I do have a potential theory, but I'm not 100% sure on if it's going to be correct or not. So I'm excited to see how the story unfolds, what twists that there might be. I'm definitely expecting a twist. And uh, yeah, but as of right now, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna take myself out for dinner because I think I deserve it. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys real soon. Good evening, everyone. It is around 10.15 on Saturday evening. I have been reading for most of the day and setting up some fun playdates with some friends. And I am happy to report that I have just finished the book of cold cases. Um, I do have some thoughts. My overall rating for the book is going to be 3.5. The first half for me was five out of five. And I was kind of taken out of the story in the second half. Um, I did write some notes. Again, I don't really want to have any spoilers in this video. So what I will say is that I was missing a plot twist at the end. Kind of halfway through, you find out who's responsible for what. And I was expecting there to be something else happen or somebody else was actually involved, but there really wasn't any of that. I kind of saw everything coming and that was a bit disappointing. I loved the characters. Um, I liked the complexity of Beth. I thought Shay was really great. Some of the, the plot or the, some of the, the character stuff that I was missing was who who was Anders? Um, if, if you've read the book, let me know if you had the same thoughts. Like there was just really no backstory on that particular name that came up a couple of times. And I also wanted to know who Lily's dad was. 
that was a complete miss for me. I kind of wish that they would have went into who that was because I thought that may have tied in with Michael or another character, maybe even the officer, Officer Black. I thought that maybe something was tied there as well, but there was just no payoff at the end for me. So I went in the first half of this book, I was super invested. And then as soon as they kind of started talking more about Beth in like the 70s and in, in the 60s and kind of things like that, it I don't know, it just something was off for me. I did like the paranormal aspect of the book, but again, I thought that they could have either completely done away with it or they could have ramped it up more, you know? It's just, it was very mediocre throughout the second half for me. I did still enjoy reading it. If you're in a reading slump, I have been in one heck of a reading slump. I think this could possibly get you out of it. It was a very fast read for me. Um, I, now, granted, I did start reading this at the beginning of the week, but I was on page 100 yesterday, so I read 241 pages in the last, you know, day and a half. So I'm quite happy with that. So this is going to stick around for a little bit. I think I might actually give this to one of my friends to read. I think she may enjoy it. I think she's going to have the same thoughts as me on the actual ending and things like that. We were actually talking the other day. And a lot of the thrillers that we're reading don't have the payoffs or the plot twists that we think they deserve. And uh, we're kind of always left wanting a little bit more. So again, great book. I'm very excited that I was able to read it. I am going to start uh, Book Lovers tonight. It's, you know, 10, 15. I probably have like another hour or so in me of reading that I can get done. I'm going to put some ambiance on, on my TV. Um, I did find that uh, doing sprints today definitely helped me. I was doing 45 minute sprints. Um, I was doing it on Steph Love's channel. Uh, it had aired earlier on in the day, so I just kind of played it back. And it was five hours. I think they did four or five 45 minute sprints in there. And that helped me a lot today. So I might try to find some other sprints if I can uh, for tonight to get a start on this one. But um, I thought I didn't want to just do the book review in this video. So I do have a few other books that I have uh, kind of come across in the last few days. So I wanted to... Uh, put them out there, see if you guys had read them or heard about them. So let me get those compiled and uh, yeah, just one sec. I put my glasses up here because you can see my ring light. Like if I put them down, it doesn't look like super fun. So that is why they're up here and why I'm not wearing any makeup. Love that. Um, but it's Saturday, whatever. Uh, the first two books are 100% because of Rochelle. Um, they are two Colleen Hoover books. I actually picked these up at my local drugstore in their book section. Uh, so Ugly Love is the first one and November 9 is the second one. I've only read a couple of Colleen Hoover books. So I don't know if I'm going to read these as like, is Colleen Hoover one of my favorite authors? Because this will be, be book three three and four and I did give Verity five stars and I gave it ends with us I think like 4.5 so there is potential for Colleen Hoover to be one of my new favorite authors so very happy to pick these ones up this one I've already read it is a very fun little um kind of piece of Blue Jays history I'm actually thinking about giving this to my mom uh, because she loves the Blue Jays almost as much as I do. Uh, so if you're watching, happy little gifty. Um, this is just the little book of Blue Jays stories. So for example, uh, the Blue Jays had a most unusual 2020 season. The pandemic forced them to play their home games at the Salem Field in Buffalo, but their 60 game schedule consisted of 26 home games where they had an impressive record of 17 and nine and 24 on the road. Here's a fun fact. 
This one's a fun fact. The only time the Jays have played outside North America came on April 1st, 2003. They beat the Texas Rangers 8-1 at Estadio Hiram Bethorn in San Juan, Puerto Rico to open the 2003 MLB season. And there's fun facts about Roger Clemens. He was a really great Cy Young award winning pitcher that we had back in the day. So this is just fun little facts about the Blue Jays. So, you know, go baseball. I did pick up another Colleen Hoover book. This one I actually picked up at um, Chapters the other day. It's Reminders of Him, as you can see. I don't know a whole lot about this one, but it just says a young mother fights to earn a place in her child's life, but is there room for her? So I'm not going to read any more. I think I'm just gonna go into most of these blind. Um, I'm hoping that I like these ones just as much as the other two that I've already read. The next book I have been seeing everywhere on booktube, um, it is The Atlas Six by, is it Oliver? Olivy Blake? Olivy? Olivy? I don't know how to say that. Um, but the back, like, I just love this cover. I think it is so beautiful. Uh, the back just says, Secrets, Betrayal, Seduction, Power, Welcome to the Alexandria Society. So this obviously involves Greek mythology, but I also think that it is dark academia potentially. Or oh, no, wait. It says each decade only the six most uniquely talented magicians are selected to earn a place in the Alexandrian society, the foremost secret society in the world. The chosen will secure a life of power and prestige beyond their wildest dreams, but at what cost? I'm into it. I thought David Copperfield was literally talking to me through the TV when I was around seven years old. So, you know, him, David Blaine, come at me. Loving that. Okay, and then the final book that I picked up, I did go to Chapters the other day. I was kind of having a down day and I was just like, I need to be surrounded by books. So instead of doing the smart thing and going to my library, I went to Chapters. Of course, I purchased some things. But there was a really nice man uh, that was kind of like had a table I didn't realize he was an author until I kind of came in and he came up and he's like are you okay if I introduce myself and my books so the way that he spun his books were that um they're kind of James Patterson style short chapters I'm all about that I have all of my um Alex Cross series right here so I'm probably going to be starting that up again soon as well um but this guy's name is Gary McGugan I was so impressed and he was just <laughs> He signed like I did a I did a lap and then you know I kind of felt bad because he was talking to people but you could just tell that they weren't like super interested so I do enjoy James Patterson so I did want to support and um, he is like a little local author to me as well so I picked up the first book that he wrote uh, I believe there's five or six in his series so if I like this one then I'll reach out to get some more uh, but this one is called Three Weeks in a Day. I do like the uh, I do like the front of it as well. It just says John George Mortimer is at the top of his game. The company he built from the ground up is now one of the largest in the world, and exciting developments promise to broaden its reach into even bigger markets. He prides himself on making good decisions and surrounding himself with strong, capable people. But after learning he has developed breast cancer, he realizes he must quickly find a worthy successor. So I think this is something to do with like a fast paced business thriller. Um, Gary McGugan, just in the little biography at the bottom, uh, I believe was a like a senior consultant for some big corporations. So he's probably talking a little bit from his past as well. Um, but he even like asked me what color <laughs> of, of Sharpie he wanted me to, to sign or wanted him to sign it in. What just a wonderful person um, and he just says the date that I was in there and warm wishes I just thought that that was really nice so I'm really excited about getting to this one I think I might actually do a separate vlog reading this one as well as Oliver's book uh, Faith the face in the window um, that was the author that had reached out to me and I kind of want to support smaller not as well-known authors in the same thing and uh, I'll probably do that in a separate video Okay, and the last three books are probably the most sentimental uh, books that I have in my collection other than some Murder, She Wrote books that remind me of my grandma um, and my Betty White book as well. Um, but 
I haven't really talked about it on this channel. I'm pretty pretty private about my uh, my my family life, but um, in March, um, unfortunately, my stepdad did pass away. My stepdad was a uh, very charismatic character, and uh, he was the person who taught me how to polka when I was small. He would whirl me around at every wedding that we were able to go to, and uh, he definitely brought straw hats back in style. So um, I was able to uh, go to, obviously, his um, uh, visitation, memorial service, and everything. It was really nice. He was a vice president of our legion in my hometown, and there was a really nice uh, service for him at the legion. So I was really happy to be able to be there. And uh, I did go back to my mom's place afterwards and I was gifted some of the books that he had in his collection. I remember a few Christmases in a row I had gotten him books and uh, I kind of think that I got my love of thrillers through him a little bit because he would always be like, oh, well, if you like this one, you're going to like this one. He also really liked Dan Brown. So um, that is something that we definitely had in common. This is not actually an author that I have never read from before, but I thought that I would give it a try. I think this one is actually um, part of a series. I don't think that you have to read them in succession. I'm not sure, um, but it's Jeffrey Deaver, the three books that I was able to pick out. This one is called The Coffin Dancer. There's a little iridescent little thing on here some kind of a symbol this one is called the 12th card I honestly just picked it because it has a playing card on the front and I love me a good card game and then the third one is roadside crosses maybe this is the one that's in a series I think it is um, so yeah these are the three that I picked out again I'm really excited that I was able to um, get these for my shelf. They are going to be part of my permanent collection because I know that he read them and I'm going to think about him. I have a uh, little kind of like bird cage with a candle up there just kind of as a memorial to him on my shelf and uh, I'm very excited to read these. All right, so that's going to wrap everything up from my side. Again, I do suggest reading this book if you do like thrillers. Um, I would go into it with a little bit of a lower expectation just because of the ending. The first part of the book, again, five out of five, highly recommend. Uh, but also if you're in a reading slump, this is an extremely quick read. So yes, definitely pick this one up. Uh, if you are a part of the book of the month, it is still definitely a great book to pick up, especially for like $10 or something for an add-on. Like that's insane for a hardcover. So really happy with that one. And then as soon as I get done this one, I will bring you my hopefully happy thoughts. Emily uh, Henry has been like a four to five star author for me. This is gonna be the third book that I uh, read from her actually. These two right here are both Emily Henry books. Um, I was kind of hoping that Book of the Month was going to come out with a hardcover. I'm kind of surprised that this book wasn't part of their Book of the Month for the month of May, but it is what it is. I'm fine with this like super floppy version. But uh, yeah, that'll do it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, let me know what you guys are reading as well. I always like to uh, make some comments down in the comment sections uh, for whenever I get some messages. But hope you're having a great start of your week. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you real soon. Toodaloo.